Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. Today, we'll be looking at Battle Line. In this video, there will be an overview and description of the game. We'll inventory the components and we'll review the rules. We'll go through gameplay including setup, sample turns, and victory conditions. Finally, we'll look at some recommended accessories to enhance your gaming experience. There will be some helpful links in the description as well as a timestamp index. If you want to skip the introduction, click on the desired timestamp to go directly to setup and playthrough. And if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share, and leave a comment on what games you would like to see reviewed in the future. Battleline was published by GMT Games and was designed by Reiner Kinesia. In this two-player card game, opponents play as the ancient Greeks and Persians to capture flags to win the battle. Battleline comes in a relatively small box standing at 9 inches high and 6 inches wide. It should easily find a place in your game shelf. An app is not required to play the game and there is no app assistance. The age recommendation is 14 and older. This is considered an easy game to learn and play and each game should average about 30 minutes. This is a two-player game, and it is considered competitive since you will be trying to defeat your opponent. Battleline is not designed for solo play, and there are no official solo variants. There are no expansions to Battleline, but Battleline is actually a remake of Shot and Totten, and there is a sequel called Battleline Medieval. Reiner Kinesia has designed many games, including Lost Cities and Tigris and Euphrates. An internet search will help you locate many more games by this designer. And if you enjoyed this game, you may like these other two-player card games. To find additional similar games, conduct an internet search using the following keywords. Card-based, card-driven, area control, combat, and two-player games. Now that you've seen a brief description of the game, let's get into the game itself. Battle Line is an area control card game for two players. No board or dice are involved. Thematically, the game is about military conflict between ancient Greece and Persia. However, the theme is relatively superficial and you do not need to have any knowledge of military tactics or geography. One player represents Alexander of the Greeks and the other player King Darius of the Persians. Now let's take a look at the objective and how the game is won. Two players aim to create powerful three-card formations on their side of the flags in order to beat the formations on the opponent's side of the respective flags. A player wins by capturing any three adjacent flags or any five of the nine flags. Now let's take a look at the components. Battle line comes with one four-page rulebook, nine red pawns which serve as the flags, 10 tactics cards, which influence the formations, and 60 troop cards that come in six colors, with each color having values from one to 10. Now let's take a quick look at the rulebook before we get into actual gameplay. The battle line rulebook will cover the following topics. Preparation, the objective, gameplay. It will explain the troop cards, the formations, the flags, and also the tactics cards. You capture a flag if your three card formation beats your opponent's hand. In this example, player one has played three red cards with the numbers three, four, and five. Player two has played three blue cards with values two, four, and seven. In this case, a straight flush beats a flush. Therefore, player one captures the flag. Page two of the rulebook shows the battle formations from strongest to weakest. The formations are similar to poker hands, only in battle line the hands have three cards instead of five. It's also important to note that in battle line, a three of a kind actually beats a flush and a straight. Of course, in regular poker, a three of a kind does not usually beat a flush or a straight. And if you don't want to mess around with the rulebook description, you can go to the GMT website and download the color cheat sheet to help you remember the order of formations. 
The cheat sheet is designed to be cut in half and given to each player. Now let's set up the game for play. Player 1 and Player 2 sit across the play area from each other. Take the nine flags and line them up in a row between the two players. Shuffle the troop deck and place it at one end of the battle line. Shuffle the tactics deck and place it at the other end. Deal seven cards to each player from the troop deck. Normally the player's hands are hidden from the opponent but in this case, we'll be showing all the cards for demonstration purposes. Now that we've set up the game, let's see some sample turns in order to see how the game is played. The non-dealer will go first, in this case, player one. Each turn, a player will select one troop card or one tactics card from their hand and place it face up on their side of the battle line next to one of the flags. The player then claims a flag if applicable. At the end of the turn, the player draws one card from either the troop deck or the tactics deck to refresh their hand to seven cards. When both decks run out of cards, no additional cards are drawn, but play continues until all remaining cards are played or a player wins the required number of flags. Recall that players are trying to capture any three adjacent flags or any five out of the nine flags. Flags are won by formations of troop cards played adjacent to the flags. There are three imaginary slots on each side of each flag. The order of cards played is irrelevant. Only the final formation value determines who captures the flag. Remember that the tactics cards are used to influence the formations. So player one begins by placing the blue five card by the first flag. He can draw either one card from the troop or tactics deck. Player one decides to draw from the troop deck to replenish the hand to seven cards. Player 2 then plays the green 6 card on the opposite end of the battle line and draws a troop card to replenish their hand to 7. Player 1 then plays the blue 2 card to start forming a flush formation of blue cards. Player 1 then decides to draw a tactics card instead of a troop card. In this case, the tactics card is the fog card. Each of the tactics card is unique and will have a different effect on the formations. A player may hold as many tactics cards as they wish within their hand size of seven, but may never play more than one more than their opponent has played, meaning they can play a tactics card unless they have already played one more than their opponent. So at this point, if player one decides to play this tactics card during the next turn, they cannot play another tactics card until player two has played one. This prevents one player from monopolizing all of the tactics cards. Player 2 then places the yellow 2 card by the first flag. Player 1 does not know that Player 2 has additional cards with the 2 value, so does not know if Player 2 is bluffing or intends to capture the flag with a 3 of a kind. Player 2 then draws from the troop deck instead of the tactics deck to replenish their hand. Player 1 then decides to play the blue 8 card to finish their flush formation. Before drawing a card from a deck to end their turn, a player may claim one or more flags. In order to do so, the player must have completed a formation of three cards on their side of the flag and must be able to prove that troop cards on the opponent's side cannot beat their formation. If the opponent's side also contains three cards, the outcome is easily calculated. But if the opponent has fewer than three cards, the claiming player must prove that the opponent will not be able to create a winning formation regardless of what remaining troop cards may be played. You may use open information from the layout of cards played to show certain cards are no longer available, but you may not use any information from your current hand. Unplayed tactics cards cannot prevent a flag claim. In this case, player one has played three cards at the first flag, but cannot yet claim the flag. Even though player two has only played one card, it is still possible for player two to still win the flag if they can form a three of a kind. So player one must wait for further developments of formations at the first flag. Player one then draws a card from the troop deck. Player two then places gold two by the first flag and draws from the troop deck. Player at one at this point does not know if player two will have a three of a kind or is bluffing. Player one can now play the fog tactics card to eliminate any formation advantage player two may have, but decides to hold on thinking player two may not be able to capture the flag yet. Instead, 
Player one plays gold nine by flag two to start a formation for the second flag and draws from the troop deck. Player two then plays the purple two card to form a three of a kind. Since a three of a kind beats a flush, player two can capture the flag. Had player one played the fog tactics card on the previous turn, the formations would have become irrelevant and the cards on each side would have been added to see who had the larger sum. Player one would have won the flag because the blue cards totaled 15 and player two's cards only totaled six. However, player one guessed wrong and chose not to play the fog tactics card so player two can now capture the flag. Player two then places the flag behind his cards to show he has captured the flag. The cards and the formations remain in place for future reference. Once captured, tactics cards cannot be played to recapture the flag from the opponent who first captures the flag. If the formations are tied, the player who played the last card loses the flag. It is possible to capture a flag before your opponent plays three cards on their side. We'll look at two examples where a flag can be captured before three cards are played on each side of the flag. In this first example, player one has played blue cards with values eight, nine, and 10, which gives player one a straight flush, which is the strongest formation in the game. Recall that the cards do not have to be played in order. In this case, player two has only played one card, which is the red five card. However, Player one can claim the flag now because there is no combination of cards left that will allow player two to capture the flag. Let's look at another example of early flag capture. In this example, you can look at the layout of cards played to determine if a flag can be captured early. In this example, player one has played the blue eight, nine, and 10 cards, but at different flags. Player two has played a straight red flush of seven, eight, and nine at the first flag. The only way player one can beat player's two formation is with a higher straight flush. However, player two can now demonstrate that player one has already played the cards needed to win and therefore can capture the flag now without having to wait for player one to play additional cards. Now let's look at a couple of examples using the tactics cards and how they can affect formations. There are a total of 10 tactics cards and they each have a unique effect. First, we'll look at the fog card again and see what happens when actually put into play. In this example, player one has played three purple cards and produced a straight flush, which is the strongest formation in the game. However, player one cannot claim the flag yet because there are still combinations that can beat this formation. Player two's hand contains three cards with a value of eight each and the fog tactics card. Player two then plays the fog card in line with the chosen flag. This will enable player two over the next three turns to play all of the eight value cards next to the flag. Normally, player one's straight flush would beat a three of a kind, but the fog card disables the formations, and this forces the players to add the total value of their cards instead. So in this case, player two's cards total 24, which is greater than player one's total value of 15. Therefore, player two can claim the flag. Let's look at one more example of how a tactics card can affect the formations. In this example, we'll look at the redeploy card. Player one has played two cards, each with a value of nine and is apparently aiming for a three of a kind. It is now player two's turn. Player two can now play the redeploy card. The redeploy card is one of the tactics cards not played by a flag, but rather played face up next to the tactics deck. Refer to the rulebook for where tactics cards can be played. As it states on the card itself, player two can take one card already played and move it to another spot on the battle line. As the card states, the moved card must come from an unclaimed flag and can only be placed at another flag if the three card limit is not violated. After playing the redeploy card, player two can immediately move the green one card from the third flag to the first flag. Since player one cannot possibly win the flag now, Player two can claim the flag since the straight flush will beat a three of a kind. So play will continue until a player wins any of the three adjacent flags or any of the five out of nine flags. If two experienced players are playing, it can be difficult to capture three adjacent flags since each player will be trying to block the other. In this example, player one continues to play until they've won five out of the nine flags. 
Now let's look at some accessories that may enhance your gaming experience. Battleline has a great insert that accommodates all of the components. There are even cutouts in the plastic to make it easy to retrieve the cards from the tray, so you don't really need a storage solution. If you are playing Battleline on a padded card table, you should be able to easily place and pick up cards. However, if you are playing on a dining room or coffee table, you may want to invest in a game mat. They are relatively inexpensive but make card play much easier. And of course, you can use the mats for other card games as well as tile games or dominoes. Battleline is a relatively inexpensive game, but if you play the game a lot and don't want to have to buy another copy when it may be out of print, you can invest in some card sleeves that should protect your cards for a long time. If you only play once in a while, you may not need card sleeves. But if you play frequently, card sleeves are a good investment and will save you money in the long run. Just keep in mind that if you sleeve your cards, they may not fit back into the original box insert, so you'll have to find another storage solution. Battleline comes in a relatively small box, but if you want to make the game even more portable, you can buy deck boxes that should also be able to accommodate the flags in addition to the cards. You can also keep a PDF version of the rules on your phone or tablet so you don't have to have a physical copy. Battleline is not a complex game, so you'll likely not need the rules after a few plays. Fantasy Flight Games makes a deck box that even has a detachable storage tray attached to the bottom. If two experienced players want to change things up and add a little excitement, they can use a speed clock like the ones used in chess. You can set a time limit such as 5-10 to 10 minutes to make the game faster and more intense. You can agree to pause the clock each time you have to stop to discuss who can claim a flag. This is not an idea presented by the publisher or designer, but it is something you can add when you become more experienced with the game. That concludes this review of Battleline. Visit us at these sites to learn about more games and how they are played. And, if you would like to experience a thrill greater than making a final stand with the Spartans at Thermopylae, stick around for our disclaimer. Coming up next!